Welcome to LabMiz.com in our lab video series on Cisco FTD 6.1. You can find a complete list of FTD videos on our website by clicking the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. One of the new features introduced in FTD 6.1 is the Firepower Device Manager. Firepower Device Manager, or FDM, allows you to locally manage an FTD device without a presence of the Firepower Management Center server. In our last video, we have already set ourselves up with a brand new FTD device that is ready for configuration. In this video, we will walk you through FDM web interface to help you understand what configuration options are available and how to navigate around the GUI. At the same time, we will configure device basic settings without getting into too much details of policy configuration as we will save that for our next video. At this point, we assume that you have access to an FTD device that has been set up for local management. If not, you might want to check out our last videos on FTD installations to see how we got that to this point. For our lab setup, we have our Cisco ASA 5506 that has been converted to FTD in our last video. With three interfaces connected to the network, the inside, which is Geek1 slash 2, connected to VLAN 10, the subnet 172.16.10.0, although we have yet to configure that interface. Then we have the outside interface, which we went through the configuration initialization, again in last video, on gig1 slash 1, the IP 192.68.10.251, with the default gateway of dot one to the internet. The now management interface of the firewall is connected to the inside VLAN, VLAN 10, same as the inside interface, with the management IP of dot two fifty. Then we have a server VLAN, VLAN 32, that's our Windows 2012 sitting on, which is acting as our domain controller and DNS server, the IP of 172.16.32.40. Right now, the configuration that we have on our firewall came from the device web interface setup wizard that we did. Now we are going to go ahead and go through the web interface more thoroughly and along the way, hopefully, put in some basic settings so we can get internet access for our internal network. So let me bring up an RDP session to our Windows 2012. And currently we have a web browser pulled up to the Firepower Device Manager, the IP 10.250, which is the management IP right here. Go ahead and log in using the admin account. And once you're logged in, the first page that you will see is the device dashboard. So this is the default home page for the FDM. Here you will find an overview of your device and various configuration sections related to the device settings. Starting at the top are the makes and models, software version, vulnerability, database versions, and IPS version as listed right here. All right, so we are running an ASA 5506 threat defense software version 6.1 with a vulnerability database of 270. And this is the current version that we have for the root updates for the IPS. Then you have this nice connection diagram right here that shows you the current interface status and connections to internet called connection diagram. We briefly went through this in the last video. By default, the interface one slash one, again, this is for our 5506. If you're running ASA on a different model, then the interface numbering might be slightly different. 1 slash 1 is connected to the outside internet as shown by this right hand side of the diagram. Currently it has access to the DNS server but not NTP server just because we haven't complete the internal routing. And then the 1 slash 2 connects to the inside network which is on the same network that our management interface is connected to and that for us is VLAN 10. The interface 3 through 8 are currently not configured. Right now, the bottom half of this page, we will see several configuration sections available for the device, starting off with the interface section. What's telling you right here is three out of nine interfaces are currently connected. You can see threes are enabled. Once you click into that, you will see the FTD interface configuration page. And this is, I would say, usually where you begin your configuration. Here we already have the outside interface configured with the IP during the device initialization in the last video, which is 192.168.10.250. We can edit the interface if you like, if you click on the icon to the actions column. The interface name is outside, so that is currently enabled. If you want to add description, you can do so right here. The IP address, 
subnet mast. If you're still dealing with IPv6 address, you can add them right here, along with some basic setting, link local, suppressed route advertisement. Under the advanced option, you can adjust the MTU of the interface, making the interface management only, just like the ASA. Dplex speed, which by default set to auto, and then additional IPv6 configuration for the DHCP. So pretty straightforward, not the whole lot that you can configure. For our inside interface, it appears that we haven't changed anything so far. I still use the default IP address, so 192.68.45.1. So let's go ahead and maybe update that to reflect what we have in the diagram, which is the IP 172.16.10.2. Go ahead, click Edit. Keep it as a static IP, but instead we'll replace that with 172.16.10.2. Same subnet mask. And we went through all these same options already. We're not going to use any of them. Leave the map default and click save. Right, and now we are getting a little complaints from the box saying that the subnet that we're trying to use on the inside interface are not lining up with what's currently configured for the DHCP scope. By default, it appears that there is a DHCP scope that belongs to subnet 192.168.45. So before we can make our change, we need to go and delete that scope. Let's see if I can find that. Going back to the main device setting page or dashboard, click enter DHCP server. And you can see right here, this is the server configuration. Go ahead and clear that. Click remove. Now that it's gone, we can go back to the interface and give that another try. 10.2, save. One thing I want to make a note here is, unlike an ASA, there is no concept of security level. As you can see, you've got the name the IP address, but not the security level. You can configure as many interfaces as needed on this page or as available by your ASA model, including the sub interface. If you would like to add a sub interface, if one of your device interface is supposed to be configured as a trunk, then you can click this add button right here, add sub interface, right? And give it a name, the VLAN ID, the sub interface ID, and the rest of the configs are pretty much a standard IP address. Of course, no duplex or speed because this is a logical interface. And then don't forget to enable that. Another thing to note here is that either channels or redundant interface are not supported, at least as of 6.1, on the 5 Power Device Manager. All right now that we have updated our inside interface to a correct IP, let's go ahead and deploy the config. If you look at the top right there, the icon lit up as soon as you make some kind of config change, just to let you know that there is a pending config that needs to be pushed out and deployed to the device. So right here you can see the objects ready to be deployed. You can click on that and uh, your changes won't take effect until you hit that button right here, deploy now. All right, so that's gonna take a little bit of time, so let me close that out, have that run in the background, and then go back to 